All right, this week we are going to continue our adventures in making canes with polymer clay. This week we're going to make some oranges. Stay tuned and see what fun and easy steps it takes to make some really good looking orange slices. Alright, so today we are making oranges. So I've got an orange, and the first thing we need to do is get some orange clay put together. I went, sh I was out of orange clay. I checked my clay stash, and there was not enough of any orange that would work. So I went to the store expecting to get orange clay. They didn't have any orange clay. So I got some red and some yellow. Going back to our kindergarten lessons that we learned that red plus yellow make orange. Now I was kind of particular about my red. And granted I probably had red and yellow but I wasn't sure if I had the right colors. I picked a red that was on the warm side of red meaning an orangier red and a yellow that was also on the warmer side of yellow. Some reds are more purpley. They're more of a cool red. They're a purplier red like a cherry red. That won't make a pretty orange when mixed with yellow. That will end up with a brownish looking orange. Same with my yellow. I wanted an orangey yellow, a warm yellow, not a cool greenish yellow like a lemon color. These specific colors are Indian red and sunflower. So those are the colors we're using. I also picked up a fresh block of translucent white, what do they call it, translucent white. And I have white translucent clay here. I buy mine usually in the bigger container, hoping that's not all dirty. So our first step, we have to make some orange clay. And we need an orange that looks pretty much like this. And today we're going to make our orange peel and our, and our interior of our orange both out of the orange. Sometimes I use paint for the skin. Today I'm gonna use the actual clay. So, I'm going to cut these open, and I'm always careful not to cut where, this, where the color name is. I usually, I find that before I start cutting my blocks of clay open. I don't care if I cut open the brand label. I want to make sure this label is intact that tells me my color. Now, if you look at the back of your female block, and Primo and Sculpey are the same way they're already divided for you so you can tell how many parts you're getting. Oh and also you need to use like a Fimo or a Primo type clay. Don't try this one with a Sculpey. It's probably not going to work. You'll be very frustrated. Sculpey is way 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 too soft to do anything like what we're doing today. So I'm going to start by taking one strip. I didn't cut down straight. One of these little divisions here. And let's see, I'm going to run this actually through my pasta machine. Pull that one through. And I've got my pasta machine. It's always off to the side of the table here. Rolled it through on the thickest setting. Now, pull two of them through. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get this blended. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to blend these two colors of clay. And when I get it blended together so there's no streaks of either color, I'll come back and we'll compare it to our orange. Alright, so I have my clay mixed pretty thoroughly. I don't know what that is because I cleaned my pasta machine after I used it last time. Um, Obviously this is way too red, and I figured it would be because yellow is not as strong of a color, but I, what, why am I cutting the red? I need to cut one more chunk of yellow. I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine, and I'm going to mix in this additional yellow portion. So this will be two parts yellow to one part red. It's kind of where I'm suspecting we're going to want to be. We might need to fine tune it a bit. And we may add some white. We'll see when we get that far. So I'm going to turn the camera off, continue rolling this clay together until it's 
a nice solid orangey color and then I'll be back. All right, so that's our color and I think we're getting close. We're gonna add just a little bit of white now. Probably, let me see if I can find it. Okay, there's a, a small block of white in here. I usually throw all of my clay of each color, of the individual colors into those bags. I want about one half part yellow, or white to start with. I don't want to put too much white in here. But this is a continual um, round of looking at your color and deciding, okay, I need more of this, I need more of that. Do I want it more warm or, or cooler? Do I need it lighter or darker? So I'm going to mix that white in, and then I will come back and we'll see where we are. All right, we're getting really close. I want just a little more yellow in there, probably about a half of a part, so about a half of one of these strips because this looks a lot more yellow than this does so I'm going to mix this yellow in and then I'll be back again all right we're getting really close so at this point I am going to actually roll this out to a thinner setting probably down to about a four because I am going to cut just a small piece of this clay and I'm going to bake it off because I want to see what I've got. I just got a clay cutter here. I'm just going to use that. I'm going to bake this because I want to see it may shift color, especially since there is red in it. It can shift a little bit. So I'm going to go bake this off. And when this is done, I'll be back and we'll compare it to our orange. All right. So our baked off piece, it turned a little darker. I'm okay with this. Um, I think, well, no, you know what? I want a little more white and a little more yellow. I'm going to put in another half part of white, another half part of yellow. I want this lighter and a little more yellow. So this will be one part red, one part white, and three parts yellow, I believe is our proportions we are now at. I want to get it right. I want it the color I want it. You know what I mean? It's got to be right. And even if I had gotten an orange clay, I would have probably done some fiddling with the color. I probably wouldn't have used an orange straight out of the package, although Mandarin from Female is close. That one you might be able to get away with. I'm going to just continue rolling this through the pasta machine, mixing it together. When it's all mixed together, then we'll take a sample. Actually, I'll take, I'll roll it out, take a sample, bake it off, and when I get that sample baked, I'll be back. All right, so here's my latest round, and I like this a lot better. That's a lot better combination. So now we know what our skin color is. We're going to take, we're going to move our clay off to the side. I don't want to get that all mixed up with what I'm doing next. So I'm going to save off part of this. I'm probably going to save the majority of it. I don't need a lot for the inside. Let's see. I think I'm going to save, I'm going to take a ball about that much. Those off to the side. I'm going to make a ball and then kind of a log because now I need to mix in translucent clay, which is right here. So now the inside of our orange, I'm using the same clay, the same orange, but I need to make it translucent, hence the package of translucent white clay. And don't put away your other clays yet. You're going to need more white pretty soon, too. So let's see what I've got here, other than clay on my knife. I should have my wet wipes out. Okay, so this is... That's approximately one part worth. So we're going to take two of these. I think I need new blades soon. And I'm going to mix one part of our orange mixture with two parts of translucent. When I get that all mixed together, 
I'll come back and we'll take a look at it together. All right, now this is pretty well mixed. And it looks a lot lighter, but it won't bake up that much lighter. I'm going to roll this thinner again. Almost forgot that part. Because there's no reason to bake a whole thick piece. I just need a thin piece. Now I'm going to bake this up. Now you might be thinking, why is she baking off all these samples? Because I want to see what it looks like. I want to get it as, more, as realistic as I can. So this will go in the oven for about five minutes at the recommended baking temperature of 235 degrees. When it's all done, I'll be back again. All right, so this is how this one baked off, and I'm not as happy with that as I would like to be. I'm going to go ahead and use two more parts of the translucent because I want that to look more translucent when it's baked. So I will be back when I get two more of these added and I get the sample baked off. All right, I'm not sure how well the difference is showing up, but that is a much, much better color. When I hold it up to the light, I can see through it a lot better. So that's our color. So next we need to start forming our cane. All right, so now we're going to take this clay that we've got. This is our translucent and orange mixture, of course. And I'm going to make a, a little drum shape, a little kind of short, fat piece here. Now I'm going to show you. There's a couple of ways to do the next step. And um, I'm going to do my favorite way. I think it gives a better result. All right, so we've got this. This is our orange clay. This is going to make a lot of doll-sized oranges. Now I have some clay. This is a piece of one part white to one part translucent. I'm still using Fimo. That did not get as straight as I would have liked, and I think I need just a little bit more. I'm going to roll this through my pasta machine. I'm getting this down to fairly thin. Now we're taking a little bit of artistic license because in reality the membranes between the orange segments are not this opaque. They're more translucent. They're almost clear. But if we do that we won't be able to see them. So the first thing I'm going to do, another artistic license we're taking. I'm only going to make eight wedges because the more wedges you make in your segment wedges you make, the harder it is to keep this together and keep it the way you want it. It's more apt to get distorted the more pieces you cut in the middle. So I'm going to cut down the middle, then I'm going to turn it and cut down the middle. Then I'm going to cut each of these in half this way. We're just giving the illusion that we have a real orange. And I want to keep these in the same order if I can because they fit together. In case my cuts are not quite right. And don't worry about air holes. We're not going to see a lot of de a lot of that stuff. All right. Now we're going to wrap every other segment. So I've rolled this out to a number four setting on my pasta machine. This is pretty thin. It's not as thin as reality. I know, you know, in reality, your orange segment, you know, the membrane on there is a lot thinner than that. Now, I'm going to take this. Don't worry about that air hole. Like I said, that's not going to matter. I'm going to go just past that, and I'm actually going to wrap the corner here. Wrap it around, cut it off, and cut that off. You don't have to have all of it off. Now, I'm going to skip one. I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I want a little further on there. I'm going to go past the edge so I can cut it off level with the edge. Now I'm cutting with the back of my knife again. I forgot to silence my cell phone. Hopefully you guys didn't hear it. Hopefully it won't uh, 
make any obnoxious noises because I can't reach it from here. Now we're going to do this one. Uh, here's another piece I rolled out. I'm keeping them still in order. Let's see. Here's a piece I can work with. And I had some gunk in my pasta machine. I I have been cleaning my pasta machine and I'm still getting gunk on my um, clay. I think I need to disassemble my pasta machine again and do a thorough deep cleaning. Okay, let's get this trimmed back. Now, make sure we don't have any pieces with orange there. Now I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to make a very, very thin little snake. I don't need anywhere near that much. these together. Hopefully I didn't forget which way I was going. I'm going to put this in the middle. And then the other four. Come on. And now I'm going to cut that off. Now I'm going to take all of this white and I'm going to re-roll it at well, I'm going to start at number one, and I'm going to roll it down to the second setting on my pasta machine. Actually, no, I'm just going to roll it down first. Whoops, I forgot to make it thicker again. And I want a rather long piece now. Now, I'm going to take some of this orange. To start with the thickest setting, that second one. I'm going to take this orange all the way down to at least the fourth setting. I'm going to try to run it through at five. Five is the next to the thinnest setting. All right, that's about as much as I'm going to get, and that's plenty. Now that's a fairly thin piece. long enough, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to setting number one, and I'm going to roll it through very straight, making sure it's rolling through this direction only. Now down to number two. You see we're getting thinner, and each both layers are getting thinner. Now the third setting. That's as far as I'm going to go. Now we have our peel. And yeah, I've got some black marks on it because, like I said, my pasta machine needs cleaning. I'm not going to worry about these pieces that are rolling out, coming out. I am going to kind of smush this together. I don't want this to shift now. Am I under camera? Barely, but I am. Alright. Now very important that we cut this off right where it meets. We don't want any overlap. We want these pieces to come together nicely. I'm going to get that white 
because that white there will kind of ruin our illusion. So we're going to pull that out. Gonna do that. Pinch it together. I'm gonna cut off this extra. Yeah, that's the right. I'm gonna try a different blade. That blade is just not cutting. Let's try this one. That one's a little a little sharper. I think I need to go shopping for more blades. Okay. Now I've got that pretty level. Now we're going to come on. Yes, I talked to my clay. That over there. And there's a lot of scrap clay comes out of canes. Now we're going to work this in our hands. Kind of a funky shape there. So I'm going to push this down. I'm actually making it slightly wider so I can get it joined together. So I'm not coming together quite the way I want on that end, but this end looks good. Now I'm going to start by squeezing. I'm using my hands. And we might do some more canes later where we do very little rolling where we do mostly pulling. Let me get these clays out of my way. Now, we need to measure our orange, my ruler. And keep in mind, oranges come in different sizes like any other fruit in the grocery store. Some are bigger, some are smaller. This was a pretty average sized orange. So, this one is about three inches in diameter. So, for 112 scale, that's going to mean a little under a quarter of an inch. Alright, so now we're just going to continue. I like to start by rolling in my hands because I know I can give it a lot more firm pressure and a lot more even pressure this way. I can feel what's going on better. Don't worry about how the ends are distorting. That's going to happen. Don't worry about getting fingerprints because it doesn't matter. Now it's starting to get long enough that I can start to do this. Now I have my... This is a circle template. You buy these, I think you get these at like the office store. Where I think they're used for architecture, maybe? I'm not sure. But this is really handy. I use it a lot. I don't really want it laying where it's getting raw clay on it, however. So let's see how far down we've gotten. Okay, so this now is an inch in diameter. At this point, I'm going to cut it. You notice I'm rolling as I cut. All these are going to become ends again. And now we can see what it looks like. I set that piece off to the side. And I'm going to keep working. Now let's keep going. And now I'm going to keep going. This is the only portion I'm going to bring down to 112 scale. We notice we started off with a really small piece and it's not going to take a lot. Now, it is going to start caving in on the ends. Don't worry about that. It's going to happen. It's getting loose there. It's caving a little too much, so I'm going to see if I can cut back past there. Oh, it's breaking on that end. That's okay. I could feel it starting to move around too much. That meant it was starting to come apart. So now, cut off that part that broke. 
hold. And now I'm using my fingers. It doesn't have to remain round at this point. I need to squish it back together. I need to make sure that it's maintaining its internal structure. I'm not worried about the external shape. That we can retrieve later. We can fix that. All right, now I'm pretty comfortable. I'm going to cut off this end too. Yeah, that's fine. What's this end look like? The end that was breaking. It's a little off, but we can close that end in. All right, now we can start. Excuse me, I'm battling a cold. My son was sick all day yesterday. This, by the way, is day two of recording this video. I started out yesterday. And as we get smaller, you'll notice it gets a lot lighter. But that's okay. That's major. It feels like it's getting about right. I always have trouble finding the right hole. Oh, five, six, okay, so it would be about here. Okay, so that is, it's at five sixteenths. That's, that's close enough to a quarter inch for me. I'll go a little bit smaller, not a lot. All right, so out of that little tiny piece, we got how many inches here? We've made it go out to six and a half inches, and that doesn't even include the stuff we cut off because it was getting malformed. Now, this needs to sit. Um, I'm going to let this sit for a while because this is a more intricate cane than the one we did last week with the hard-boiled egg. So I want it to set up so the clay can kind of firm up again. It's soft for me working with it. So it needs to firm up. When it sat for an hour or so, I'll come back and we'll slice this and see what it looks like. All right, now this has sat for about an hour or so. So I'm gonna take my knife. The first orange, let's see, I'm gonna cut, I need to cut past that white, that white strip. And I'm just rolling as I cut. This keeps it round. So let's make some closed oranges first. To do that, we're going to gently use our fingers. We're going to close the end and then we'll cut it. And we're going to make the end of the orange. And it's okay if it's not smooth because the end of the orange isn't. I stuck my thumbnail in there. Ignore the thumbnail. And I'm going to roll until I get all the way through. And since this has sat for a while, it works really well. Kind of get this out. Now I have. I'm going to use this. This is a brass, like one of those metal cleaning brushes. I'm going to get some texture. I'm going to cut that a little too long. So let's take a slice off of this. Because that's definitely way too long. There. So we'll get some sliced orange and a half an orange. That's better. That's a better size. Now we have a half an orange. You could do two of these and set them on your t on your doll's plate and they can have a snack. And here's a couple of slices. Let me get a paper plate to move those to. You can see that center, hopefully the camera's picking that up. I'll put these over on the plate and then I'll zoom in a little bit. Because the, let's see if 
I get these in the center. If I zoom in slowly, hopefully we can stay focused. But there you go. That is an orange cane. And we've got plenty here. Now what else would you do with an orange slice? Well, one of the cool things I like to do, get a relatively skinny one. Hopefully I'm not sticking my head in the camera because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Now you can cut one like this. You can cut a, a slice in it and you can mount it on your doll's glass just the way it is. Or it almost did it. Now this one's a little thin to do what I was going to do. You can put a slice in it. Come on, go flat. And then you can bake it off and you could glue it onto a drink glass. Let's make one just a tiny bit thicker. And I'll show you my favorite one. It's hard to exactly see what I'm doing with the camera here. There we go. That's better. Actually, I'm going to cut this on my finger. Don't do this at home, kids. Slice. Then. Come on. I am all thumbs today. And not in a good way. There we go. Kind of twist it like that. Those look really neat on your plated dinners, and I don't even have that in the camera. Let's see if I can get that over here. See how I've kind of curled it? Flip the ends around. Put that on the paper plate. Let's make another closed orange. Uh, let's see. Let's cut this up to where we've got don't have a hollow. And this end looks a little different. It will throughout the cane. It will look just a little bit different. Now to make it easier to texture, you can do some of your texturing here. Now, we've got a closed end. Let's cut fairly close to that closed end. We'll have another half orange to put on the plate. Cut a few more slices and then I will go bake these off. We'll bake these since this is Fimo. It'll bake at 235 degrees. Probably about 10 minutes is about all this is going to take. This end, you don't see the white in the center quite as much as we did on the other end. All right, I'm going to go bake those off. When they're baked and cooled, I'll be back. All right, these are out of the oven and cooled. And let's see if I can get in closer and then uh, get these off the tr plate. Because I want to put, I want to make the, the um, the insides of the orange look wet. So for that, you could use any clay compa compatible glossy finish. I'm just using some gallery glass today. Whoops, gallery glass today because it was here. So let's see if I can first get rid of the dried up gallery glass. It's on my hand. Well, let's see. I'm trying to find two things over here in my mess next to my desk. One is something to hold this still with. This will work. Do I have a brush? I don't see a brush. Ideally, I would have a little tiny paintbrush. Okay, this is... I thought I had this cleared. There we go. I don't want it on the outside, I just want it on the inside. And it would be better if I had a really small brush. All I see is this one, and it's not in very good shape. But I think it'll work. Remember, gallery glass goes on white, but dries clear. I have kind of a pool of gallery glass over here on my tray, out of the view of the camera. 
dipping into that. This is a really ratty looking little brush. And then when these dry all the way, which will take a while because this takes a while, then I can uh, flip over those slices and do the other sides. But if I was to turn them over and paint the other side now, they would stick to my table, to my tray. And I don't want that. These are always a little tricky to, to do. You don't have to put the clear finish on, it's just I think they look a lot nicer with it. And when these get dry, I'll come back and we'll look at the finished project. Alright, so our clear finish is now dry and these are ready to put in your dollhouse miniature display. There, be sure and check the blog post because on the blog post I'm going to talk about the second half of this video that didn't happen. There was going to be a second project, but I ran into technical difficulties, so that one didn't happen this week. I'll try and bring that project to you another week. Um, I'm really having fun doing this uh, series of how to make basic canes, and I think we'll probably revisit more canes in the future. Thank you for sticking with what I'm sure was a rather long video. I haven't edited yet, but I'm sure it seems like I've been recording forever. Uh, be sure and check the blog post. Like I said, there'll be more information there. And find us on Facebook. The link for the Facebook group is in the description box below the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so. We have lots of dollhouse miniature videos. I think right now I have around 300 videos on this channel. So a little bit of everything. Um, come back next week and I'll talk to you then. Bye.